Java development is one of the most in demand fields of 2024 and majority of the companies are moving towards Spring Boot which is one of the most ultimate framework in backend. So I'm going to tell you how you can become a Java developer in the coming year 2024 and how you can get a job in one of the top companies as a Java developer. So I'm going to start from the basics. I'm assuming you don't even know what Java is right now. All the way to learning backend, all the way to learning Spring Boot which like I said is the ultimate framework. I'm going to tell you all about it. So let's get started. A little bit about me, I've been working as a Java full stack developer since around two years now and I've seen a lot of development in this field. I've seen a majority of the top companies moving towards Spring Boot and I've seen majority of the Java developers getting a median salary of up to 16 to 18 LPA. So it's a great booming field that you should definitely step your foot in if you haven't already. So let's talk about how you can learn that and go towards that field. So let's start with Java first. So you need to understand what is Java. Java is a programming language and how you can understand it, how you can learn it. So every language has its syntax, which are its attributes, you know, which makes it different from other languages. C has its own syntax, C++ has its own syntax, and Java has its own syntax. So first you need to learn the syntax of Java. And a lot of people tell you different courses and all, but I say you don't need any course for learning Java itself. You can just use the free resources. And by the way, all the resources will be mentioned in the description box. So you don't need to keep a note of anything. So there's only two websites that you need to keep track of or that you need for learning Java. One is Java T point and one is tutorials point. You can use either of those websites for learning Java. So start from the very basic. And the only way you can learn any programming language, to be honest, is by hands-on experience. So start writing small, small codes, understand what are variable, understand what are data types, understand how a for loop works, how if else works. Now, once you're clear with the basic syntax of Java and you're able to write some small basic programs, now it's time for you to master OOP. What is OOP? It's object oriented programming and it is one of the most important features of Java. So you need to know what OOP is and how Java implements OOP, what are classes, what are objects and how it's used. And a great resource for learning OOP is Telesco's YouTube channel. I'll give a link to the video in which he beautifully explains what object oriented programming is with the example of Java. I myself learned OOP from his videos when I was in college, so you can definitely watch his video. And I want you to understand in depth what is OOP, because not only just for Java, but OOP is very important in languages like C++, Python, JavaScript, and it is one of the most important topics while going for interviews. A lot of interview questions are asked on it. So now you've learned the basic syntax of Java, you've learned OOP, you're able to make classes, you're able to make objects. Now, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to learn some advanced Java topics. Now, what do I mean by advanced Java topics? So there's a couple of topics here. The most important thing is collections. So collections is the implemented library of Java where they have certain implemented library methods and data structures. You have array list, you have sorting method implemented, you have queue linked list implemented. I'll give you a chart of it. It will come on the screen. You can take reference from it and again for learning this you can just watch one of the videos on youtube i'll give a link to my favorite video you can take reference from that you can learn collections after that you need to learn a few more things such as exception handling exception handling is very important while making real life projects so this try this catch so that any exception can be caught while your code runs live so it's a very important topic which is very important for writing industry level code now after that comes multi-threading, which is again a very important feature of Java. So try to learn multi-threading, try to understand what is multi-threading because it, it is one of the most important features of Java. So these three topics you should learn, one is collections, one is exception handling, one is multi-threading. Learn these three topics and any advanced topic if you come across it. So now you've learned the basic syntax, you've mastered OOP and you've learned advanced Java. This pretty much should be enough for you to say that you're a master of Java and if anyone asks you a question from Java from anywhere, you should be able to answer that. Now that you're good with Java, it's time for you to dive into backend. So what exactly is backend? If you go to any website, what you see is the front end. It's the UI, UX, it's the design, it's the colors, it's whatever it is in the front end. And the data that is stored, that is in the backend. For example, if you register on a site, you give your username, you give your email, you give your phone number. That is stored in the backend, in databases, in tables. So you need to learn databases, you need to learn SQL most importantly. And I've made another video about how to learn SQL, how I mastered SQL in within a month. So you can watch that video also. But basically you need to learn about databases. You can use Geeks for Geeks for learning databases. I'll give a link in the description. There's a little bit of theory, but you can read it in a couple of days max. But you do need hands-on training in SQL. 
So in SQL, you have various queries that you run for manipulating the data in the tables. And just very briefly, I'll tell you because you can watch another video for that, which I'll give a link. But very briefly, there's only one website that you need for learning SQL and that is w3schools.com. It is the ultimate website for learning SQL. No website can top it. Go on w3school.com. They have a live implementation feature where you can live write, you can write live queries and see how the queries are working on their table, on their data. Once you're good with databases, once you're good with the backend part, like the MySQL part, SQL part, then what you need to do is you need to sort of connect both of these things. So you have your Java, you have your backend, it should be connected. And for that, you're going to learn something called JDBC. So I'll give you some great resources for learning JDBC. I myself have made a couple of videos on it. You can learn from there. And apart from this, you need to learn a couple of more things like servlets, JSP, which are like the basics of Java development. Now, after you've learned all of this, I want you to make some very simple projects, some very simple kind of OOP project. You can make something like a coffee vending machine, like a hospital management system, a school management system. Try to make some very basic projects, which does not, which might not have some UI, but it should have some backend. And you can learn videos on how to connect Java to backend. Make some very simple projects which are for your own learning. You need not put them somewhere, but they are for your own learning. Now, all I've mentioned so far is just a stepping stone for you to learn Spring Boot. Because we are interested in what is getting the most attention in the industry. I'm going to tell you what to learn which will bring you the most success in this field and that is Spring Boot. So you need to learn Spring Boot and I'm not telling you to uh, dive deep into Spring Boot directly because if you do so you'll get confused if you start making Spring Boot projects right away. What you need to do is a little bit of theory about Spring. What is Spring exactly? So it is a part of Java development you can think of it which makes your life very easy implementing backend and a great video you can follow for learning introduction to Spring is again Telesco's videos on Spring. He has made some really cool theory videos about what are dependency injections, what is beans, and what is the main feature of Spring. Once you clear theory-wise what is Spring, what is Spring Boot, I want you to get hands-on. But right now, you're not in a position that you yourself can make a whole Spring Boot project. So what you're going to do, you're going to take help. And there's a great YouTube channel that you can follow, Amigos Code, where he has made an entire project using Spring Boot from scratch. So what you can do, you can go to his video, and there's a few free courses available also on YouTube. I'll give a link to them as well. You need to go on their channel and code along with them. Install IntelliJ or any other software if you want. And using Spring Boot, create a good project. Create a project which will be your main project, which implements backend, which implements API calls. So follow along with the instructor. Download a software like IntelliJ in which you'll be making the Spring Boot project and make a project along with them. Now, you need not copy the exact project that they're making. You can make something similar, you can add your own twist to it, but make a good project which has Java, which has Spring Boot and which has nicely implemented backend. Now, I'm going to give you one more advice and you need not follow it if you want to just go into backend, but I always suggest learning a little bit of frontend along the way. You can learn a little bit of HTML, CSS, JavaScript, the basics of it, so that you can also add a little bit of UI to your project. If you don't want to do that, it's fine. You can create a pure backend project also, which is something that I did. So you can follow along the instructors, make a nice project, make sure that it's easily accessible on either of the servers so that when the interviewer sees your resume, he can see the project live. So try to deploy the project somewhere so that you have a working model of the project. And this will be the project that will be there to impress your interviewer. And this will show your interviewer that you have some great skills in Spring Boot. Now, after doing all of this, after learning Java, after learning backend, after learning Spring Boot, now what you're going to do is you're going to start applying. There's a lot of openings across all of the companies. And before you go for the interview, one thing that I'll highly suggest, and this is a bonus tip for you, Google top 50 Spring Boot interview questions or top 100 Spring Boot interview questions and go through each one of those questions. Because in the interview, the interviewer will ask you very basic or theory questions about Spring Boot. Like what is dependency injection? How does it work? What does this annotation mean? So you need to be clear with all of those stuff. Apart from that, try to brush, brush up a little bit of DSA because even in Java interviews, some DSA is asked for that. You can do a little bit of lead code and that will also help you enhance your Java programming skill. So do a little bit of lead code, do a little bit of problem solving along the way so that you also become good in DSA. Do all of this, start applying and surely you'll get a good job 
as a java full stack developer or a java backend developer so that's pretty much it all the best to you guys the year 2024 may it bring you a lot of success as a java developer as a full stack developer and if you have any doubts feel free to contact me on instagram or on linkedin or just leave a comment in the comment section of this video so thank you mm -hmm.